My name is Mark Sabuchle, I work in the Sports and Sponsor team in Pembroke Communications. Uh, we work with most of the leading sports uh, national governing bodies in Ireland and various uh, GA teams, rugby teams. Work with the GA, uh, work with Dublin County Board, with Leinster Rugby. I uh, would work with Under Armour, Paralympics Ireland, Institute of Sport, um, and numerous county boards, as I said, uh, otherwise. Outside of that, then, I'd also do a bit of commentary with TG Carr uh, on GA and on rugby as well. Um, also do a bit of media work with uh, TV3 and 3E with News Talk, and also do a bit of writing for the Irish Daily Star as well. One of the big things that we've seen from a broadcasting point of view and sports broadcasting point of view is interaction with the audience. Um, you only have to look at most of the live uh, broadcasts at the moment, whether you're looking at Sky Sports News and looking at their coverage of Transfer Day, or whether you bring it back to home and you look at RT or Satanta or TG Car, they're always looking for interaction with the audience. Um, I think Satanta Sports had a really good initiative there recently, whereby uh, in the Alliance Leagues they asked the audience to actually vote for who their man of the match was. They had a specific hashtag set up for it. So I really think that sports broadcasting in Ireland has, has gone up a notch or two, but also the sponsors that they bring in. I think there's a far more bigger willingness to work with the sponsors uh, and try to interact and engage with the audience far more. So I certainly think you're getting more from what you're getting for your hour and a half or your 70 minutes or whatever the case may be. Uh, and certainly I think the trend is that fans, if they're sitting at home on the couch, they've got the remote control in one hand, but they have the tablet or the iPhone or whatever in the other hand, and they're far more willing to interact not only with what they see on screen, but with friends on Facebook or on Twitter or whatever. So so definitely the interactive element I think has, has gone through the roof the last couple of years. You can't get away from the current economic climate that we're in and you can't get away from a sponsor really looking for a return on investment. If they're going to put their logo next to that competition, they want bums on seats or they want people uh, signing up to whatever tariffs or whatever the case may be, they really are looking for a return and I think that's the big change um, that we've seen lately. It's not enough anymore just to have a name associated with a competition or a name plastered across a jersey. I think you can't get away from London, the impact it had on us, but I think um, it, it, it maybe had a bigger influence on Paralympic sport, I think, in particular. Um, Paralympics Ireland were very vocal when going over there that they had, a, I think, a target of maybe five medals. They came home with 16 medals. Superstars were made out of the likes of uh, Jason Smith, Michael McKillop, Mark Rowan in particular, Dara MacDonald, Bethany Firth. I mean, like household names came out of that. And I think when we think back maybe two, three, four years, I don't think Paralympics Ireland had that level uh, of recognition, of support. Um, so I think as we're heading towards Rio, I think we've seen that I think sponsors will focus in on, well, where is the, where is the success really going to come from in Rio? You will definitely look at the high-performance boxing unit. They did absolutely brilliantly, obviously, on the back of Katie's success, but also the rest of the team did, did very well and performed admirably over there. And then in terms of Paralympics Ireland, I think you'll see sponsors much more willing to engage and to see that they have superstars there that can really leverage their, their sponsorship. So I think absolutely London had a huge effect. We issued a sports sentiment index in Pembroke Communications back in December 2012 uh, and we surveyed independently but we surveyed uh, over 1,000 members of the public and asked for their views and opinions on sports and sports stars in Ireland at the moment and one of the really interesting things that came out of that is like say Katie Taylor obviously came out for, on top in terms of being a favourite sports personality uh, after the year that she had. But after that, you, you know, you would expect maybe the likes of Henry Shefflin to poll very highly, but he didn't. And I think that's one of the things that um, soccer and GA in particular will really struggle with, is that their players are so county specific or club specific that it's very hard to get, um, I suppose, a likability ac across the board. So the likes of Robbie Keane or Shea Given didn't really feature highly at all. Instead, it was the likes of Rory McIlroy, Katie Taylor, Brian O'Driscoll that came out very strongly. So one of the big challenges that national governing bodies have is actually because we're a small island of maybe 4.5 million people, but we've got three very strong sporting organisations and all competing with each other for the hearts and minds of the public and of the players. The other thing as well is that uh, we've gone away from this model of patronage, so you're not really going to see local business people getting involved, whether it's publicans or whether it's um, uh, developers or builders. Obviously those uh, industries have taken a big hit, but previously they would have been huge supporters of grassroots sport in particular. Uh, the money isn't there, so the grassroots are really struggling. I'm very excited actually by, by what it could look like in 2020. 
Uh, in terms of the general sporting landscape, 2019 will be just off the back of the Rugby World Cup in Japan. There's all sorts of rumours that Ireland will have the Rugby World Cup in 2023. So come 2020, we could be only three years out from a Rugby World Cup in Ireland, which would be absolutely fantastic. There's already talk of the GA and the rugby coming together and ground sharing and all this kind of stuff. So I think that would be a really nice place to be in 2020 if we were three years out from a, a Rugby World Cup. 2020 will also be an Olympic year, so um, it hasn't been decided yet. I think it's Madrid, Tokyo and Istanbul that are in the running for to host the Olympics in 2020. So I think it's going to be a really big year. We're going to see the big companies in Ireland again invest heavily uh, in Team Ireland ahead of uh, those games in, in one of those uh, destinations, as I said. So I think 2020 is going to be a very positive year uh, for sports and sports sponsorship in Ireland. I think again we're going to see some changes. I think we're going to see certainly a move towards more online content, whether it's live match streaming, um, and I think we're not too far away from that already. Most of the uh, main broadcasters in Ireland already have players uh, available on their um, online sites, so I think it's only a matter of time before full online broadcasting rights uh, become available and before people are, are actively going after that. And I think there'll be a competition as well. We've already seen some of the county boards in the GA, for example, going after um, online broadcasting rights for their game. So I think it'll be a very different um, landscape. And the other thing as well is, who knows where the rights will lie in, in, in 2020? Who knows whether it's RT that have the mainstay of the GA rights, similarly on rugby, will it still rest with Sky Sports, etc. So I think we have an interesting seven years ahead of us. I think there's a lot of doom and gloom out there at the moment. Um, not helped obviously by um, you know this current government, and I won't get into government bashing, but uh, you know I think they have to take ownership of where they're at. They're still going on about the previous administration, whatever else, and I'd love for them just to take ownership of it. We put them in there for a reason. I'd love them to drive it on and um, you know just instill a bit of positivity and a bit of confidence into the consumer that's out there because at the moment we're just getting uh, hit left, right, and centre. So if there's one one wish for 2013 is that we'd be left alone, but given a bit of positivity to kind of latch onto.